Oh, hi everybody, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Sicily. I'm a you know, third year PhD student at the University of Alberta. As at the time this video has been made. Um, so today I have a friend, a colleague, and uh, he will be sharing his experiences on how he prepared for his PhD candidacy examination and also, you know, he passed as well. So just to give you, uh, maybe he's going to, you know, give kind of an, a, a synopsis of what a candidacy exam is. So yeah, yeah. So let's get to know you. Absolutely. Uh, as you all know, my name is Dhruvish. I am in fourth year of my PhD, and I had finished my candidacy exam last year. Okay. So it has been a year. Uh, I'm not entirely very fresh on the the emotions and feelings, but there are a lot of takeaways that I had um, for myself and for others who are going into the candidacy. So, so first of all, so I wanted us to what is what is a candidacy examination, first of all? Right. So uh, I like to think of it as an entry exam into your PhD, where um, if, if there is an entry exam, there is an exit exam. Exit exam is where you would do your thesis and defend your, defend your thesis. But for candidacy, uh, especially in our department, human nutrition, it's, it's an entry exam where they're testing your knowledge that uh, you're able to pursue your PhD to the end of it and uh, understand the pro or understand and explain your project to um, scientists who have that um, high level of intellect and scientific rigor. So that is what my understanding of candidacy exam is. Um, it is very uh, elaborate, extensive and uh, sometimes broad but as well as detailed uh, question answer sort of interview um, method. Yeah, one of the things that also, you know, different um, universities call it different things, right? So right. call it like comprehensive exam. Mm -hmm. uh, so both comprehensive examination and PhD candidacy exam are the two most common names that universities call them. Yeah. And it's very, one of the things I also learned, you know, is that even at the University of Alberta, different departments, they have their own style of candidacy. So whatever we're going to be sharing today is with respect to uh, the Division of Human Nutrition at the University of Alberta. But overall, yeah. in terms of the big picture, the goal of the candidacy is all the same. So yes. across board, irrespective of the department, irrespective of the school that you are, so it's all the same. Okay. Yeah. So yes, let's, let's get into uh, uh, how did I prepare for my candidacy exam. So to, to start preparing for any exam, you need to know the scope of the exam, exam. what it involves and, and um, how are you going to prepare for it before even you start preparing for it? So, um, and, and as Peter said, it's, it's very specific to the department, but I'll take it one step further. It's also specific to the supervisor you Absolutely. have. Yep. So each supervisor has a different style of uh, checking if their candidates or, or their students are prepared enough. So uh, for my supervisor, it was very, um, very natural conversation around a topic uh, that was involved in my candidacy. So. Uh, speaking of topic, we had to first identify the topics that were involved. So as my uh, PhD is in omega-3 fats and immune system development, so any topic surrounding this broader topic would be involved. So the basic starts with uh, metabolism of food, how food is digested, then it comes back to lipids, fats, how fats are digested and after the digestion, how are they used. And, and, and uh, so once the once the topics are identified, then you further go into how much depth you want to go into each topic. So there are two sections to it. First is uh, the literature on the topic, which is people would have studied at this specific topic for years. Yeah, so nice. you would need to know all the important uh, informations that are gathered so far. And then the second component is what is the current knowledge and where the research is headed. So. Sorry. So the omega-3 fats, we, we have known that they're important for certain organs and functions, but then there are certain functions that are not known that are still yet to be discovered. So those things are also to be learned uh, for this exam. So for me, my supervisor, we had uh, scheduled regular meetings with each other and uh, we would pick a topic and uh, discuss the topic. But in order to be able to discuss the topic with my supervisor, who's an expert in the profession, in the field, 
uh, I need to uh, up my sort of knowledge. Absolutely. So what I do is before uh, picking a topic, I would be given like a week or two weeks time. Two in this weeks week, weeks in this time, I would search the literature, find as many paper as I can, relevant paper. And, and it's easy, very easy to get carried away in this process of finding oh, papers, reading, yep. reading. And sometimes you just go into a rabbit hole and, and um, learn a lot about something. something <laughs> but uh, it's not necessarily important. And, and I realized this very early on that uh, I started learning about uh, fats and then there's omega-3 fats and then there's one DHA fat. So I started learning about DHA and then it just keeps going. So yeah. at times what you have to do is pull yourself back, Absolutely. look at the topic again and see what all other factors are surrounding the topic. Yeah. So you have to be very well rounded for the topic. Therefore, uh, whenever I had a time and a week to prepare for a topic, before I went on with my supervisor to discuss the topic, I would just uh, give myself all the sort of surrounding topics first and then each topic I would break it down into a day or two and then cover it that way. Yeah. So one of the that, that's also what I had to do as well. Yeah. You know, when you have a topic and then think of what do you need to know in as far as this topic is concerned. And yeah. one of the things I normally love love to do is to try to get the best review article on yeah. that on that particular area. Mm-hmm. And that gives me okay People are looking at these very recent ones, right? Yeah. And then from those ones, I, it, it will help me to kind of, you know, look at the specific topics yeah. that I want to study. Yeah. And then from there, I'll begin to, you know, read them one after the other. And mm-hmm. then, like like I said, you know, reading and finding something interesting, you know, you can it, it, you can find very interesting papers, very new papers, interesting yeah. papers, but. If you want to start reading every new thing, yeah. you know, you might, you just get, you know, you lose so much time, you know, reading yeah. a lot of things that you that might not be part of your exams, right? It, it's good, but because of the short time, you really need to be able to focus, right? Yeah. So, this tie, you know, it, it, it's a bit different. I know in other universities, you know, they, what they do is that you, they give you three topics. Yeah. You know, and then those three topics they will ask you, not really directly related to your research, kind of close but not directly. entirely related. Then you have to go and review literatures on those three areas, mm-hmm. and then maybe write like a maybe two-page summary of each of them, mm-hmm. and then they will not pick. I say, okay, you're working on omega three and omega three fatty acid and cancer, right? Yeah. Now we are going to give you. Um, let's say saturated fatty acid in diabetes mm-hmm. so it's still fatty acid but a different kind different and then concept. a different disease right yeah. so then you have to go review that area and then come up with something novel a hypothesis mm-hmm. you try to test right so yeah. that's a little bit different from us where you have to actually write a proposal based on your project right mm-hmm. so i i think you know you know, different universities have, like I mentioned, different have their own system, and you know, at the end of the day, it's all helping the student to really understand these key concepts and really high level yeah. intellect, right? High level, absolutely yeah, high level. I want to add, uh, but Peter has also recently finished his candidacy That's exam. Right, he has yeah. successfully <laughs> passed it. It's very impressive. Absolutely. And um, uh, the thing he's mentioning about. Uh, testing different things in a candidate so it's one thing to know the content on a field Absolutely. but it's also another thing to come up with a design uh, experiment or a design experiment that would uh, first answer the question but before even to get to answering the question you have to frame your question so Absolutely. being able to frame a question such that it can be tested Absolutely. experimentally yep. and uh, this all happens in a very short duration of time during the examination and uh, the the candidate's ability to sort of think in that direction as a researcher or a, as a learning researcher is very important for uh, uh, success in this candidacy exam and one one example i can think right now is uh, uh, my super not my supervisor but on my committee member there is a professor uh, at U of A and uh, she would come up with a question that uh, uh, it's it's basically uh, asking me that that there are different hypotheses for something to happen 
and uh, in order to conclude that one of the hypothesis is true we need to disprove the other hypothesis yep. Yep. so how would you design an experiment to disprove those hypotheses in order so that we can proceed with the main hypothesis so uh, in right there in the moment you would have to come up with an experiment and and it's sometimes it's challenging but it's it also requires you to have gone through literature uh, understood why a research was done and uh, just just running through that process because in a paper it's a very very it's not a dynamic thing it's just sitting there in front of you but the research that had gone into it is very dynamic it has there was something before it there is something after it and this paper is connecting the two so that is what uh, it's looked for in the candidate so i think uh, that is important and uh, uh, sometimes just the very basic things are also become important they also become important because uh, when you move up in the ladder you forget what was the first thing that you learned so you have to once again remember that fatty acids are carbon molecule chains yeah. and, and they have hydrogen carbon and, and the double bonds and all that so uh, yeah and so and you know the, the, the fun thing about the candidacy exam is that sometimes during the exam you can be asked the most basic question. So what happened to me, I was asked a question, right. a very basic question. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, no, the answer I have is too simple. Right. Right? Yes. yes. I was like, no, I this can't give be. this. <laughs> it, I can't make it so simple like this. I'm, right. I'm a very intellectual person. I've read all of these things <laughs> and then I just went at the middle of the party man like, no 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 you are too far you know come <laughs> come down let's go <laughs> let's gradually go. Right? right and then so sometimes you know you can prepare for something big something huge you yeah, know yeah and then uh you know you just want to be able to answer see where they when they are thinking simple mm -hmm. because they they want to see your your ability to move from the most simple things to the complex. very complex things right yeah, yeah. and you know, sometimes they ask you questions they don't have an answer to. Right. Right. And they just want to see your ability to all of the things you've read, to, you've read. Yeah. And then kind of being able to synthesize and, you know, use those things to propose something. And sometimes it's, they are not really looking for right or wrong yeah, in yeah. those situations. They want to see your ability to think. Right. Because at some point you're going to be faced with data and you don't understand, <laughs> understand. and you're just looking at it and like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> what to do? With what it? to do? Right? Yeah. What to do? Right? I, so. I was recently listening to a seminar um, on vaccines and children, uh, and um, there were a lot of scientists on the panel, and the the moderator was a also a scientist, but he's sort of involved in other. Uh, media discussions or media handling skills and sort of that so uh, there were questions from public to the researchers and the mediator the moderator of the discussion was putting this question to the scientist so the, the questions are very simple like did you had dinner and the researchers as being researchers they do not have a simple answer uh, yes or no they have a very elaborate answer, like, oh, dinner, what do you mean? I, I had food at <laughs> 7 p.m., but I didn't ca classify that as dinner, but I did have food. So the answer is no to dinner, but I did have food. So sometimes things are, things are like this. Yep. So uh, you, you are, you, once you start thinking of different factors, your brain starts to form a complex answer. Absolutely. But you have to pull yourself back yes. and give the simplest answer first, because Oftentimes, the simple answer is the right answer. Yes, yes. And then from there, build on to the complex answer if it's requested. Absolutely. And uh, one of the things involved in preparation for candidacy is also to understand the question. It's not important to answer the question, yep. but to import understand the question. Mm -hmm. So if a question is framed at you, you would want to be absolutely sure that the question you have understood is exactly what, what? the person is asking. Absolutely. So. Uh, for me, when I was meeting with my supervisor discussing certain topics, she would ask me questions. I would repeat the questions and, sure. and in my own language so that the answers I would be giving her is, is exactly what she's looking for. So uh, that is very important. And uh, it, it happened in the exam as well. Like I was framed a question. 
I couldn't understand the question and it's not that the language was difficult or the concept was difficult it's just that I was not expecting the questions in that line that way, yeah. but your brain as it comes to you you have to just take a moment listen to the question and then let it sink in your brain and you know the answer absolutely yeah absolutely I mean you know it's been it's been an amazing conversation you it know, is, if you're yes. preparing for a candidacy exam you know just know that you know um, it, it's a lot of work though you know to, but you just have to you know be positive right that you go to do it and you know get it done and pass it yeah so put in all of the efforts required and you know if you have to talk to you know previous students in your department that have done candidacy and have passed just you know what they've learned from the candidacy right and then that kind of give you perspective of what to do what to change you know and how to prepare for yours and then really you know work with your supervisor as well you know i know there are some universities or some departments you know you don't really interact with your professors yeah. a lot it's kind of in the, so it depends right but make sure you're working you know within that scope that your department provides so that you don't don't go prepare for candidacy you know talk to some other university of uh otherwise to prepare yeah. for candidacy in, in you know, saskatchewan, saskatchewan university. right so <laughs> work based on university but you yeah. know it, it's an intense you know you have to be intentional plan your time and yeah. what i have to do is to say every day for like a week i plan what I'm going to read every day so that way I can track my progress it's okay yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or oh, Thursday I wasn't able to finish this I have to leave it or as the case may be yeah okay thank you, know, you so much great you great know, talk uh, thank you for taking the time to have this conversation so Absolutely. if you have any other questions regarding candidacy exam you know just leave a, co a question in the comment section and I'll, I'll try to respond and if you also you know have personal questions for Dravesh as well so i also leave a link you know to his profile you can you know message him and ask him absolutely for that questions as well so thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful day